Today we're going to be doing a little work in the machine shop. What we're going to do is we're going to take these wire wheel adapters and we need to change the bolt pattern because they don't work with our application. We need to bring them down to a 100 millimeter by four bolt pattern to fit. So what we did, we had to do a couple things to start with. First thing we did is we measured the bore on these parts. Uh, it's all really consistent and they're very nicely made. So they all appear to be exactly the same. So what we did, we need to make a setup that we can do a number of these and be repeatable because we've got a fair amount to do. So the first thing we did is we went over and we went to our lathe and we took a piece of aluminum pipe. We turned it down to match the ID on the part. Now we went a couple thousandths under just so it would be a nice fit, not too tight so we could get it on and off, but we didn't want much slop. So it goes on there and it sits nicely and it'll sit flat down on the, the jaws of the chuck. Although we're gonna put a couple shims in there before we set it down so we don't drill into our chuck ultimately. What we did then is we took and had a welder, friend of ours, welded onto this block of aluminum that you see there. We then put the existing wheel back up, the adapter, and we took the drill, we drilled through one of the existing holes here uh, very carefully, and we made sure that we were on the center of that block, and once we got that hole drilled and, and marked, we went ahead and tapped it for this bolt. And once we did that, we took and made a small piece just the same taper, 30 degrees, as a lug nut. So when it goes down inside the bore of the bolt hole, it centers itself and we can be consistent and we can get them to repeat because each one of the existing holes has a taper to match. So now we're gonna go on to the next step. Okay, the next thing we had to do is we had to do a little bit of math. So what we did is we measured the outside diameter of one of the parts here and we came up with 139.67 millimeters. We then subtracted the distance that we want to be ultimately, which is 100 millimeters. That's the, where we want to put our new bolt pattern. And we divided that by two once we came up with that answer. So we took 39.67, divided that by two, and got 19.83. That's our distance from the outside edge to ascribe the line that will give us our 100 millimeter diameter for our bolt pattern. We then took and measured between the holes and got as close as we could get to exact between them. It's not super critical, but here we like to do quality work and the closer the better, but it's really not absolutely critical that it be perfect, but we got it as close as we think we can get it. So what we did was we ended up spraying a little bit of Toolmaker's die on here, the layout die on a piece, and we've got that. And uh, as you can see, once it's mounted on our spindle, it's it's got a nice fit. It doesn't move side to side, but it turns just just the right amount. So we've taken those measurements and we've transferred that. We've set our caliper for 19.83, our distance from the outside, and we made a nice little scribe line from the outside using our caliper very lightly so we don't really hurt it or anything, just barely scores the toolmaker's die. And then we took the measurement between the bolt holes and we also made little arcs the other direction and as you can see, they all bisect each other right there. That's where we're gonna wanna line up our pilot drill and that's where we're gonna wanna have our hole started. Now that we have our part locked down in our jig, we've got the bolt in, we've got it just snug down in the, comes down into the taper and centers it. We also made a small little punch mark where we wanted our pilot bit to start. And then we had, at one point, we've also had to make a little extension tool because it's real hard to get down that far without hitting the center of the adapter. So basically what we did was, we used our lathe and we've made, we've made a little tool it's just an adapter. It's just a piece of bar stock that's been drilled out for the, for the pilot bit with a couple of set screws. And then it's been turned down on this end to fit our half inch collet up inside of the milling machine, which we like to use for drilling and things like this because it's so much more stable and it's got a 
a, a good speed selection. So we're going to go ahead and put that in, tighten it down. And we've uh, shifted the part around and we found it right where that center is. So we've come down, we've, we've turned on our drill, we've come down, we've seen we're right there, we're right on our mark. And we're just going to go ahead and drill our first pilot hole. All right, once we're sure of our setup, we went ahead and put a couple of aluminum shims on top of our vice jaws there so we won't drill into them. And now all we have to do is just loosen our, loosen our bolt that we've got. We'll remove it. And then we just index around to the next hole. Reinsert our bolt. And being as how there's a taper there, it nicely centers itself up. You just have to snug it down just a little bit so it's tight, it's snug in the hole. And then we just go ahead and continue on and drill our next one. We set the stop so we, we know where we're at and we only go down so far. We'll continue to drill all the pilot holes in all of our parts and do one operation at a time. Well, we finished all our pilot holes. We've got them all drilled in our parts. So now we're going to go ahead and put our main clearance hole, our, our through hole, and uh, they're 12 millimeter bolts on the that we have to deal with. So we're going to go ahead and just use a half inch drill bit. That'll give us just a little bit of clearance, just the right amount. So we're not fighting them on, but they still have. Uh, a nice fit. So we're going to go ahead and we'll put a little bit of a little tiny bit of cutting oil on there and we've set our stop again on the, the milling machine so we only go right down to that aluminum shim. smoke clears and you see that we've got a nice hole there so we will continue on with this operation and drill all the major holes. Next up we're gonna have to prepare the holes to receive these lug nuts. We're gonna use nuts that look like this, they'll be this size, and they have to fit down in a taper again so they all center. So we're gonna need to cut a taper into these holes similar to the which was done over here. And I should mention also that these holes originally were smaller when we first got these. Uh, when I first made the setup in the jig, I went ahead and I drilled all these out to half inch so they would all look the same and lighten things up just a tiny bit. So basically what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to run a countersink tool into this hole until we get the countersink that we desire, the depth. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is since this nut is wider here than will fit and clear on this taper here, we're gonna have to cut a small little notch in the bottom of that. We're gonna have to plunge down with an end mill and cut a little pocket in that there so this nut will be able to turn freely and not hit on this taper. Now we don't really have to worry about getting it big enough to use a socket wrench because this is gonna be a one-time thing. This is gonna get tightened up on the car and it'll have Loctite and it'll get tightened down and we can do it with an open-end wrench and it'll just be on there for, for should be there forever. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, make a little adapter because we 
need another adapter similar to the one that we had for the uh, countersink, but we're gonna make it a little bit stiffer and as short as possible and still be able to clear this center distance here with the milling machine spindle. All right, we'll be back. So I went ahead and tapped that, drilled it for 5 sixteenths, 24, so it's fine thread, a little more meat to bite on. So that's that's the finished adapter, so we can get down in there with our with our chamfer tool and our other milling tool. So just goes in, set screw tightens down, nice tight fit, we're ready to go. Here we have our part back in our fixture, and we've got our tool inside of our little adapter that we made, and it's inside of a three-quarter collet, and everything's all nice and tight. So we're gonna go ahead and run that tool down in the chamfer there, and do that, and then we're gonna index them around one at a time and do it just like the others. And again, we obviously, we had our stop set. Blow it off a little. And there's our chamfer. And we'll just go ahead and do the same operation on all of our parts. And we'll be back with the final operation. Now we're down to the last operation here. We're gonna cut a little pocket for the nut so it has clearance so it can spin around. So we'll go ahead and cut that pocket. We got our end mill locked into our adapter that we made, and we'll just plunge cut straight down. That gives us plenty of clearance. Nut will go down in that pocket, it'll spin around, and that's pretty much our finished product. We'll go ahead and do the rest of them, and that'll be it. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Matt's Machine Shop. Today we took an adapter for mounting wire wheels, and we re-drilled it for a different bolt pattern so it fits what we've got on the car. We'll take it out and give it a try. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.